everyone and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, I am Miranda Marie. For those of you who are not new, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel. So I thought this morning I would go ahead and turn the camera on so you can kind of get a little idea of what it's like for me to work from home. It's not going to be a very long video because unfortunately when I work from home, it's not really anything too exciting. Usually when we work from home, that's just us chart prepping, um, obtaining patient history, and um, scheduling telehealth appointments. So, not that fun. Um, right now, I'm literally um, just getting ready to start my day. So, I've already got my laptop started and up and ready to go. I already have my first bottle of water. And then I also have my... Don't come for me for my Starbucks Christmas mug, but I have my little tea going. And then I also have my little breakfast, which is just some peanut butter um, and cheese crackers. I've already taken my shot of apple cider vinegar and um, drunk some water behind that. Usually when I do my apple cider vinegar in the morning, it's literally just a shot. And then I have um, these flavored waters that I buy from Aldi's. They come in different flavors. They have like mango, cranberry, um, strawberry watermelon, or strawberry lemonade. Um, I think they have like a lime. I think they have a regular lemonade. I like to buy those because they're very keto friendly. And then sometimes I just get tired of drinking plain water. And then also I usually get the little water droppers too, but that's just a way of me already having a flavor. And they're also good and keto friendly for like, if I do want to have an adult beverage, instead of mixing it with like actual juice or something i can actually mix it with the water with the flavor of water and it still tastes like strawberry lemonade or cranberry or mango so it doesn't give that water flavor and it doesn't um take away from the liquor taste either so just a little tidbit but um usually how i start my morning i get my computer going i log in I turn my mouse on because, of course, we have to have a remoteless mouse. So I do turn that on to get that going. I do also have a work phone as well. So um, what I usually do is get on here and I check my Slack. Slack is like a team messaging system that we use so we can just kind of update everybody what we're doing for the day, where we're at. Um, if some people are at a timeshare, if some people are doing home visits, if some people are traveling to get to where they need to be, um, if people are on the nomad for the week, or um, if people are working from home and they can offer assistance. So I usually do that first thing in the morning. So let me see what we actually have going on today. Looks like there's been a couple messages. Um, yeah, some people are back home. Some people work from home. Chart prepping for next next event. Um, go ahead and put my message in here. Good morning. I am working from home. Chart prepping. We'll be leaving out this afternoon to pick up my rental car for weekend home visits. So I actually have some home visits this weekend. Um, actually, mine are just on Sunday. I have two on Sunday, so I'll actually be leaving to go get my rental car today. That's one good thing I love about this company, even though you're working from home and my home visits are actually local here in Georgia. So you can get home visits like right in your area. You can get them in another state. You can even get them up the street. Even if they're up the street, they're still going to make you rent a car so you don't have to drive your own car. So that's one thing I do love about this company. Um, for assistance if needed. Have a great day. And then some people um, 
like it's, it's so weird because one of the girls who is also based down here with me she actually has events she had some events yesterday she just got back today which were home visits and then um she's getting back today but then she has to go back out again to get a rental because she has a home visit tomorrow which is in a different part of georgia so it's weird that they just didn't be like hey why don't you just do this home visit on saturday and then the two on sunday and then you'll be done for me instead of just splitting them up but that's fine because i can handle some stuff tomorrow i can get some things done on saturday plus um we have to get our flu shots so i'm definitely going to get mine today um, I was trying to wait to the last minute possible because we have to have our stuff turned in by the 17th. But I was trying to wait to the last minute possible because I usually get sick when I get the flu shot for at least a day or two. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't get Saturday so I can just have Sunday and then um, I'll have the rest of Sunday and then I'll have all day Monday because I know I'll be working from home. And then Tuesday... I'll leave back out to get a rental and then I have to go to a farther part in Georgia and I'll be driving there and staying overnight in the hotel for my nurse visits on Wednesday and then I'll drive back home on Wednesday. So um, that's that part. Let me log back into my computer because it has logged me out. But yeah, that is definitely one thing I do love about this company. They don't make you, um, they don't make you use your own car to travel unless it's like something's wrong. Like I remember my first time going out, I had, um, I was going to get a rental car cause I was gonna have some home visits in Georgia. And when I went, um, they were saying I was in the system and they weren't being able to rent to me. And I'm like, not being able to rent to me. I'm like, why wouldn't you be able to rent to me? And it had something to do with when I first moved here, there was some thefts. Um, when I first moved to Georgia and somebody had stole my identity and rented a car and I guess something happened to the car and I remember like having to show all the paperwork and everything but I guess they still did not take it out the system that was almost 10 years ago like literally when I first moved when I first moved down here I've been here for like nine years now so that's been almost what well it's been nine years and I'm just like how y'all still got me in the system when I provided everything I need? And they're like, oh, we're sorry. It must have been an overlook, this, is that, and the other. So they got it taken care of. But because they didn't get it done in a quick enough time, I missed out on money. So I ended up staying home, working from home. And the one thing about this job is, don't get me wrong, it's a great base pay, but you make more when you travel. So that's the, that's the thing here. So I'm just like, oh, that would have been perfect. Because, and since this is a contract, I get paid weekly. So I'm just like, okay, you're making me miss out on money. I got stuff that I'm trying to handle. I got two big trips that I'm trying to go on next year. Um, I'm trying to move into a bigger location, like a bigger spot, because I've definitely outgrown this one. And it's just time to go. So I'm just like, y'all playing with my money. Uh-uh. Ooh, y'all can't do that. So, but we got it, we got it taken care of. And then literally that next week they was like oh you good you straight but i was on vacation i went to houston for a girls trip and as soon as i came back they took me to um panama city florida and then um uh uh frisco alabama i believe it was called so i had to drive so i flew into panama city then i had to pick up the rental car there so of course i'm like even though i didn't call and verify like three four five times everything is good as far as the rental i'm still like nervous as hell like i'm gonna get all the way out here and they go like we can't get you a car what the fuck am i gonna do excuse my mouth but that's what i felt and i'm getting there i'm getting there and finally he was like all right i just need another form of identification because i see you never read it with us before here you go sir thank you thank you <laughs> So that was amazing. And I had never been to Panama City before. And I was glad that I only had one, literally, only had one patient that day. Me and my, me and my provider only had one patient that day. And it was like 11 o'clock. So as soon as we was over that patient and I finished doing what I had to do, baby, we was in Panama City. Like checking out restaurants on the beach, going to the window works. Like, 
I was in Panama City. I was going to Panama City it up, okay? Within reason. <laughs> and then went back, got situated, got my stuff ready for the next day, checked out the hotel, and made my way to Alabama. So it worked out perfectly fine. But um, now that I'm in my system, I'm sorry, that was a little mini story time. But that's just some of the things that can come along with, you know, traveling, especially when you're with a company who, you know, provide your lodging and your your um airfare and car rental like that's just an amazing thing it can be a gift and it can be a curse um and i say that because it was one incident where i had to wait like literally wait to hear back from somebody because i was booked at the wrong hotel and this was when i was training so the person i was going on my training event with she was at one hotel we just assumed because usually they book you together we just assumed we were at the same hotel so when i got up there they were like um i have a reservation for you here but i do see one where it's here what what do you mean they was like oh yeah it's 30 minutes back the other way how so I literally had to wait for them to give me the okay to like cancel the other one, make sure they get a refund for it, book here, use the company credit card. But it's just like, but then at the same time, they're like, if you're ever in an emergency like that, just, you know, that's what your corporate card is for. But why I got an ass shot of? Like, I, <laughs> I didn't have a rental car. Like the person who's training me at the time, like when you're first going through training, you're not allowed to like drive by yourself. Like if you're meeting someone there, like the senior person has the rental car, they're kind of like in charge of it. So if you need to go somewhere, you know, they have to take you or if another senior person's there, like let's say we were on a Nomad and the Nomad driver's there, like the Nomad driver could take you somewhere or you know what I'm saying? Like you as a new hire could not drive by yourself, which is a safety precaution, I get that. But um, it was, I was just like, <laughs> baby what do you want me to do anyways <laughs> um yeah that's literally that's just some of the things that you come across um every company is different i can't speak for every company i can only speak for the one that i work for um but now that i'm in my system i actually have my slack on my um on my computer as well and then i go in and i open all of my programs that i need for the day so i will be doing some chart prepping today um usually they send out a telehealth list it come it varies what time they send it out sometimes it could be by 10 sometimes it could be 11 and i've had one where it didn't even come out to like one o'clock and the company i work for they're based in san antonio so they're like an hour behind me so like on my laptop, it's San Antonio time. It's saying nine o'clock, whereas here it's 10 o'clock already. So that's something you have to be mindful for too, especially when you're working remotely because whatever your laptop, um, however IT sets your laptop up with, that's just what it is. Like you can't change it. At least for my company, you can't change it. Trust me, I try because it always throws me off. And they're like, no, because you're remoting in and your system is based in San Antonio, it's going to be based on San Antonio's time. So um, that's why I always like to keep, um, if I'm not wearing my watch, I like to keep my phone close by because sometimes I will get thrown off and I forget to take a break. And we have to make sure we take our 30 minute lunch because if not, we get in trouble. They're like, even if you don't have a chance to eat, you have to clock out for 30 minutes. So that's why I always try and like have a little snack or whatever. But so far, um, looks like nothing's been going on. I don't have any emails at the moment, so I don't have to respond to any of those. I am going to go ahead and open up my uh, portal so I can get to chart prepping. And usually when you chart prep, you'll get like, um, I don't want to show everything. But when you chart prep, you do get like a little, I'm trying to cover up the patient's name. It's like a little thing like this. And what it'll do is it'll tell you at the top, like what exactly it is. So mine is a general homebound event. And then it'll tell you the locations and then the patient's like code number. So that's that. And then it'll also include like the date, 
the time. Um, um, it'll tell you the provider that you'll be working with and then it'll give you the provider's cell phone number. So if you need to contact them for any reason, like if you're running late or if they're running late, you just wanna check on them. Or um, if you call them ahead of time, like, hey, this is what this patient is here for. Is there anything in particular that you need? Things like that. Um, and then, of course, the provider will get this as well. And then it will have my name on it. It has the um, nurse that's working with him and then my work cell phone number as well. So if they need to get in contact with me for any reason. Um, you also get um, another little sheet. I can't really show this one only because it has too much other patient information on there, but it's like an email that kind of gives you the same information that is like, you know, um, what type of appointment it is, that it's homebound, the location, the date, the provider. Um, the location will be the um, patient's actual home address, or if they're in a facility, it'll be that facility's address and where they're located. Um, of course, it'll give you the time, the patient's ID, um, the point of contact. So if it's the patient or if it's the POA or, you know, if it's the actual um, coordinator in a nursing home or facility that they're in. So it will give you all that information. Um, it'll also give you logistics information since technically I am still in training. Um, when you're in training or you're a new hire or you're a temp, you don't get the... Um, the kits that the senior or you know full-time or part-time employees get so they actually have to mail it out to you and usually they'll put a um line in the email that they send to you for your invites whether it's going to be sent directly to me to my home or if i'm staying at a at a hotel if it'll be directly shipped there so that way i know like on my next home visit next week when i go check into my hotel i know to ask them hey i should have a delivery here do you have you know do you have that with you so or has it arrived yet that way i can go ahead and receive it and then when you do get your um homebound kits or your timeshare kits is what they call them you actually have to do an inventory on them so you'll go into a system um, we use a system called acumatica which i'm familiar with it because i've worked with it before at a previous job and what you do is when you receive um inventory you go through and you count it and you verify yes this is what i received this is the amount i received and then you check it in and release it so logistics know okay it was received everything was counted right nothing was missing and then as you lose stuff you want to make sure that you keep um track of what you use because at the end of each day that you use items you have to go back into acumatica and then you have to deduct what you've used so then let's say if on Sunday, I go to one um, event and I only have to use a certain amount of stuff, I'll do it for that event. And then for the next home visit, if I don't have to use anything at all, then just what I use for my first patient is what I'm gonna put into Acumatica. Now let's say I was doing the Saturday and the Sunday um, home events. Let's say Saturday, I didn't use anything at all. So I would literally just go in there and I would just put nothing used. So then the next day, I would go in, I used something for the first one, didn't use anything for the second one, but I would make sure I keep count. I would put that count in there and close it out. So then everything that I did not use, we have to ship that back to logistics. And usually that'll go through UPS and it'll be like a two day, um, two day shipping thing. So that's just, like I said, that's just, depending on what company you work for and how they're set up, this is just some of the things that you have to do. I know when I was in, um, my last home events in Panama and in Alabama, um, I didn't use anything. No, I take that back. My first one in Panama, I did use some things because I had to draw some blood. So I had to use, you know, my blood kit, the centrifuge and everything. And then I had to pack everything up after I counted it. I had to drag it in the car with me. And these things are heavy. They're not light at all. So I had to drag them in the car. One of them I had to get help because it was just too heavy. Um, I had to drive with them in the back of my car, SUV, whatever you want to call it, to Alabama. When I got there, I only had to use the eye chart. So one of it, I had to use the whole centrifuge and blood kit. The other one, only thing I had to use was the eye chart. But you never know what you need, so they just send you everything. So um, after I was done with that claiming and I didn't need anything else, I literally had to find a UPS shipping location now mind you i'm out in the boondocks of alabama okay 
the boondocks on a sunday no on a saturday on a saturday was it sunday or was it saturday saturday everything is closed like everything was closing like at three four at five o'clock was the latest one that i seen and i literally had to drive backwards as if i was going to panama city almost an hour to get there before they closed so i could ship that stuff off because if i would have drove all the way back to atlanta everything would have been closed everything would have been closed now mind you my car is parked at the airport because they had me pick up my rental car at the airport because remember i flew out so imagine me turning in a rental car <laughs> trying to lug them big ass containers excuse my mouth plus my luggage back to my car just to turn that stuff in on a Sunday or even on Monday because stuff might not even been open on Sunday there was no way so I was like I'm gonna have to make this little 45 minute hour drive back the other way because I, who finna keep the who finna lug all this by themselves mm -mm, mm -mm, absolutely not so that's just some of the stuff that you have to do but um yeah, this was kind of a little bit all over the place, but I hope I gave you some insight as to one, how I start my morning, two, just some of the things that you can go through when you are a traveler, like whether you're a nurse, phlebotomist, a medical assistant, a CNA, ultrasound tech, like whatever it is, just travel healthcare in general. And like I said, every company is different, every situation is different, but this is just some of the things that I go through when I'm here, so um i'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here this might be a little serious part i know i didn't get the chance to show you a whole lot but like i said because of the type of company that i work for and of course hipaa i can only show so much but i just wanted to dive in just a little bit i know some people have been asking questions about it if i can dive in a little bit more i'll cut the camera back on but for right now i am miranda marie i hope you guys are having a great week it's friday so until next time bye